What's up guys, JV2017 here, and today I wanted to offer five more tips for survival mode since it's now officially out on PC and should be coming to consoles very soon. I made a similar video over a month ago for the beta version of survival mode, but now it's officially out and I played a lot more of the mode now and gained new perspective on what my priorities should be. The tips I'm about to share in this video are far more specific than before, but if you still need some basic general tips for survival, I've left a link in the description below to my other video because I still think it does a good job of explaining basic concepts. My first tip has to do with managing your thirst, and this is so important because you'll have to deal with this constantly, and it stems from a little tip that I completely forgot about simply because you don't need it in regular difficulties. When the sole survivor is thirsty in survival mode, he or she loses intelligence, and it stacks up really, really quickly if you deprive them from the water that they need. And unless you have idiot savant, it's just not a good idea. You need to find some water to get rid of that debuff. Also, finding purified water and dirty water just lying around in the world is not nearly as abundant as food and food is a completely separate concern so the tip here is to pick up any empty bottles that you see and then whenever you find some kind of water source or a water pump you can actually go up and refill your bottle this will replace whatever bottle you had with dirty water and keep in mind you can pick up beer bottles empty milk bottles nuka cola bottles and fill those up and those will also work and convert into dirty water and also the idea here is if you're away from a water source, maybe you're inside a large dungeon, something like that, maybe the Automatron dungeon, for example, that's really long, you just won't find an open water source to drink from. And so you will need plenty of bottles to bring along when your character inevitably becomes thirsty. And you may be thinking, wait a minute, isn't dirty water pretty harmful? Doesn't it cause certain illnesses like parasites, for example? And honestly, through my travels so far in survival mode, just playing straight through, dirty water has given me no problem. I probably drank it almost 20 times and it has not given me any illness. So I don't know if they've nerfed that from the beta or tweaked it a little bit, but it doesn't seem as harmful as it was before. It doesn't even give you that much radiation in the first place, even without lead belly. I mean, you don't even need lead belly to combat this radiation from dirty water. It's more important that you have your thirst and you're not suffering from an intelligence debuff. One last thing before we move on, you can also drink straight from a water pump. These are just the basic pumps that you made in Sanctuary for Preston and Sturges and all of them. Those water pumps will let you drink straight from them. You won't see any kind of effect, but you can hear it and it will quench your thirst. You'll see that you are properly hydrated after you drink a certain amount. You can also fill bottles from that. So before you head out, if you're in a settlement, make sure and fill up all your water bottles that you have. Next up, we're looking at well rested. And of course, you guys know this is a buff that you get after sleeping. I believe it's eight hours on a good bed, not a crappy bed. And it'll give you a 10% experience bonus for 12 in-game hours. Well, it does the same thing in survival mode, except it adds two additional things and it's essentially buffed up. It adds to endurance and to agility in addition to the 10% experience gain for 12 in-game hours. In a game mode where you're not able to fast travel at all, unless you have, you know, the Institute teleporter or or, you know, a vertebrate signal in later game, this is far more useful than it was before, in my opinion. When you're well rested, you get that endurance and agility. Those are two really helpful special categories to have. That's a little more health. It's better than taking Life Giver, for example. And also agility, you're going to be always fatigued. You're always going to have something reducing your AP pool on your AP bar. And so having more agility and having more endurance are really helpful, especially early on. So in reality, if you're properly using your settlements to their advantage, because they're super important in survival mode in order to find a nice bed and a nice, you know, amount of sleep, try to get eight hours in as much as you possibly can when you're visiting your settlements. Try to get a good bed because you guys, as you guys know, mattresses have different amounts of time that they let you sleep. For example, a sleeping bag is only three hours, a dirty mattress is only five, and then I think if you get a legitimate mattress with a, you know, frame and it's actually off the ground, then you're getting a nice eight hours plus. Plus. And so you want to make sure and maximize this as much as possible, especially in the early game on survival. Next up, it's generally a good idea to avoid any aids or chems if you can. Some situations will not allow you to avoid them, so you'll have to use them. But stim packs, Rataway, and Radex in particular are things that generally help the player, but they really cause some issues in survival mode. They will all cause you dehydration. They will make your character thirsty quickly. We've already talked about thirst and how important that is. So the idea here is to, in general, try to focus on using food and water to replenish your effects and obviously with radiation right away is kind of something you need or if you have wasteland workshop you can build a decontamination arch which is a great idea but in general like a stim pack to you know replenish your health in battle 
not nearly as good as some kind of food with some kind of really awesome effect like bonus action points, you know, damage resistance, something like that. So try to focus your shift away from stim packs and save them more for companions, in my opinion. That's kind of what I've been doing. And I took Lone Wanderer and Dogmeat with my survival mode playthrough, which is on my channel, by the way, if you guys are interested, I'll link it below as well. You know, Dogmeat goes down constantly within the first few levels and probably for the entirety of survival mode, just simply because of how hard enemies hit. So once again, if you happen to have excess food or water that you don't need to dedicate towards your hunger or your thirst, try to consider taking food or water to replenish those negative effects first, because, you know, dehydration is a serious thing in survival mode and it can kill you pretty quickly. Next up, we're talking about caffeine, and this isn't something that was overtly obvious and on the surface with survival mode. This is just kind of one of those little features that was, you know, put in here, which is actually pretty cool and something you should definitely consider utilizing. So when you go without sleep in the game, when you're not able to find a bed, which will happen, that'll promote fatigue. It'll build up fatigue and cause you issues, increase your likelihood of getting illnesses and things like that. However, you can use Nuka-Cola products in order to combat that and reduce your tiredness. It's just like in real life. If you were able to drink some coffee to stay up like I did last night to play Battleborn on launch, then you know, you need some caffeine in order to keep yourself awake, but you will eventually crash. So Kind of a similar concept in this game. If you see Nuka Cola, it's a good idea to stock up a little bit when you go out, you know, from your stash. Bring some of that if you are going to go out, you know, without a bed for a long time. Use some Nuka Cola, that'll keep you up and reduce the effects of being tired. My last tip for this video involves explosives and the fact that damage works far differently than it does in regular difficulty modes, as I've kind of touched on in other videos, damage that you receive is a lot higher than before, but also the damage that you give is higher. So it's kind of more like a Twitch shooter, like a Call of Duty multiplayer, where it's like three bullets, you're dead. It's like that. And so that also applies to explosives and in a big way, it seems like it's amplified by a ton. So the damage given and received from explosives is much higher. And for this reason, you might wanna consider Demolition Expert. I mean, you don't even need it because it's already so good, but if you wanna really take out a chunk of enemy's health and also get that awesome arc the arc is so helpful because you're going to kill yourself with certain explosives if you try to use them in certain areas because you don't know what the arc is you don't know it's going to bounce off of this will help you big time you can really tell how effective explosives are just by how easily they can kill you i died a few times already in the survival mode just from molotov cocktails i had full health and then boom out of nowhere explosion and i'm dead and also people don't realize that molotov cocktails are fairly abundant i mean if you play the game for a few hours you're gonna have at least 10 molotov cocktails if you're actually searching around and gathering things they can also be crafted so don't ignore them demolition expert unlocks some extra crafting options at the chemistry bench explosives is a good idea as well in survival mode if you're looking for that kind of playthrough so i'd like to hear from you guys after watching this video if you do have survival mode experience let me know what are your tips for survival or if you've just been watching as a console player what are some things that you've noticed that would help other people in the comment section below i really like to see what you guys come up with a lot of these uh, tips were actually driven by people commenting on my own survival mode you know playthrough saying hey this, this, and this, you know, these are some simple reminders. And I think it's a good idea to kind of pull all these ideas in one place. So if you have any tips for survival mode for our viewers, let us know in the comment section below. All right, guys, today I shared five more tips for survival mode in Fallout 4. And next time we will cover more Fallout on my channel. So stay tuned for Fallout 4 tips and tricks videos. If you learned something new or enjoyed this video, remember to hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe for Far Harbor DLC, my survival mode playthrough, Bethesda.net mods, and general tips and tricks videos. Talk to you guys next time. Peace.